block of over the front of his forehead. Apparently, I was Wait, what? I was unable to be heard as well. Oh no, the gremlins. Gremlins are strong this week. Okay, seems like we are good now. Everything is beautiful. So forget that little intro. Welcome to Horrible Tales, <laughs> where we present you a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasure. I am Dwayne, at Made of Kimchi on the internet, and I will be your machinist for this tale. This evening, we will present the third installment of the new Kickstarter, Necrobiotic, brought to you by Penny for a Tale. The Kickstarter itself is now, how many days left? Tw I do believe 12. 12 days to go, and they have already met their goal of Already met their goal of ten thousand dollars. They're at thirty-five thousand eight hundred and two. So make sure you guys swing over to the Kickstarter page, uh, which will be in the chat here soon. Hopefully, if I can put it in there quick enough, because I'm cool. Or maybe not. Dang. Yes, continuing on with our, my intro because I'm all out of whack already. For those who love what we do here on Twitch, make sure that you seek us out on the internet. And don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Check out our archives on our YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell. Visit our webpage, VorbalTales.com, with links to all of our social media links, our Discord, and our Patreon. Check out our calendar to ensure you don't miss any of your favorite shows. And if you are looking to increase your RPG and dice repertoire, Check out our affiliate link on our webpage and check out Hit Point Press, QU Empire, and Jim Hammer and Sons for all kinds of sweet loot. And don't forget about our merch store where you can get this cool mug and support Vorpal Tales on the same time. Our shout outs tonight go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we play all of our games in. <clears throat> a special thanks to Penny for a Tale for bringing this game to our doorstep and allowing us to share it with you. Much love to any mid for the custom character sheets that we use in all but, I do believe, one of our games. And I thank you guys to Love Your Rebellion, a non-profit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure to check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. As always, much love goes to the Patreons that support us. You will be the first ones who become our constructs in our new world. We, we guarantee. And last but not least, thank you to all of our subscribers, our viewers, and fans. We love you all. Before we get into the action, let's hear from our players. Tell everybody who you are, where you can be found, and who you will be playing this evening. Oh, well, I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And tonight, I am playing Brock, the techno fans. Hello, my name is Zach Rain Aldra, he, him. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at Zach Rules. Tonight, I am playing Jebediah of the Militia. Also, he, him. Hey, folks, I'm JT. You can find me online at Zenselmancer, and tonight I'm playing Ren the Architect. Hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, and tonight I will be Icarus, the Technosophist. So, the last time that we played... Did anyone take notes? I think because JT was out, we didn't have a note taker. Or did Zach, did you take notes? I was, I'm the clip person. You are the clip person. Icarus, could you lead? Oh yeah, you're the clip person. Icarus, did you take notes? Icarus did not take notes, but I can try to recap. Awesome, try. Okay, trying to <laughs> try recap. Try and recap this. It was fairly uh, easy. You guys mainly just did one main thing. Very first thing, we contacted those who knew Mario and Luigi, got some more information out of them as to where everything went down. We were pointed towards the, if I remember, I was calling it the Baski Factory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and we had scoped out the area using a drone, did a bit of reconnaissance from the roof, uh, the roof, the roof, thanks to Jebediah. And after constructing a remote detonated explosive, we went in to the factory to investigate on foot. 
During this whole investigation, we found out that the factory was being operated by a con one construct made with two brains and a lot of eyeballs operating the canning plant. This mostly beef, I'm assuming, canning plant. And operating the boiler in the back was a construct whose whole purpose was to relight the boiler when it goes out. After investigating the programming of the primary construct of the factory, we had found out that it was changing. It was changing itself, more specifically. And it knew that we were poking around in the code, and it began to attack. It scooped up Icarus, plopped him on the conveyor belt, and Icarus was getting ready to blow the explosive, blow up the explosive. But our guest star that week, replacing JT for that week, and I cannot remember JT's character's name. Ren. 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 Which I should add to Zoom. Ren would not move out of the way of the charge before it went off. So just before Icarus was turned into suspicious beef, the brain jar, the large jar was destroyed. After a bit of further examination of the fluid within the jar, we had found out that a certain psychedelic was used within the jar, a similar one to other constructs that have been going haywire and when we last left off, I believe we were leaving the area with a couple cans of beef. My memory yes. might be a little spotty. So. Yes, the, the, the last things you had done is uh, through your long range communication, you had dialed into the Citadel, letting them know that the plant itself needed to be secured and uh, through your multitude of investigations uh, prior to having to fight these constructs inside of the plant and after you had learned the fate of some of the Badger gang. Probably Luigi. Or at least part of Luigi. Part of Luigi. And uh, from that point on was where we, we signed off for the evening. But yes, as, as you did say, the the drug fluid or the drug that was placed into the brain's tank was similar to the one that Ren had discovered in his initial uh, kind of tutorial section way at the beginning of the game, where he was inspecting a construct that had a behavioral malfunction. It was very similar to that, at least in its in its base level. You still don't know the exact makeup of it because you don't have any type of chemistry set or you know lab to do any down and dirty. But yes, you you uh, did. You did discover that the uh, some of the cans, most well, most of the cans had a, a nice film of of dust on them. It seemed that they had been sitting there for you know weeks, years, but then there was a whole pallet that was nice and clean and freshly, freshly canned. All of them being labeled jelly beef bits. And that is where you had left. I assume that you're coming out as the uh, you know, the dust starts to settle from the charge that you did blow up. <laughs> Some of the badgers are outside. Rowena's kind of looking in. You know, they're kind of hooping and hollering, wondering what's going on. V, 
the containers have have blown up, and the, and the brains have spilt out onto the floor. Yes. Are the brains damaged at all, or are there, are they just kind of being brain, wet, slippery brains on the floor? <laughs> one of them is is badly damaged, especially because one of the tanks had already been cracked before you even blew it up. So, or you know, chunks missing out of it. It it took the brunt of the explosion force. The other one is just like you explained it, kind of like a a de-skinned cantaloupe lying on the ground. <laughs> for for safe measures, um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, just kind of smash the brains on my way out. Wow! Just just to be safe. <laughs> Are you going to do this before everybody else walks away, or uh, I, as, as we're exiting, as we're walking past the brains, I imagine I'm a little bit closer than some others. So, but I was the brains were in between me and the door when we blew up the tank, if I recall, since I had passed it. And... All right. Now, one piece of information that you uh, had forgotten. But was very you, you had it like on the tip of your tongue the entire time was the name of the factory and before you guys had gone in you know i explained that it was missing some letters and <laughs> you kept calling it the Baxi factory when it in fact when you had talked to the citadel they had let you know that that was the uh the uh Bekesi factory the old Bekesi factory so you have a name of the factory. It is indeed, it was indeed a, a family owned factory. Do they relay any information about the fate of the Bekesi fa family? You had not asked them. However, if you call back, they will inform you that it was sold from the Bekesi family. Uh, to someone in Limon. The, the details are shoddy. Looks like some of the information has been redacted. That's weird. So it might still be possible that Mom and Pop were running the Mom and Pop factory? From within the jars? <laughs> it, it could be. Um... Okay. Um, Ren, you would know this that when when constructs are made, most of the time it, it sometimes it, it isn't cleaned one hundred percent. But usually, when the body is used and tanned to be used as a construct, records of who that that body actually was is destroyed. That way, no one has any, you know, no one gets too attached to the constructs. No one goes looking for their great aunt, you know, Betty, who's, you know, now a street sweeper. Makes sense. Seems seems reasonable in an unreasonable world. So when we were at the the hotel earlier. Marina had said something about Lamont. Yes. And, and before we got on this job, or we were called in to do this, I had just finished interrogating a suspect um, who had possession of hallucinogens, um, who had stated that he got them from a bar in Lamont. Correct. And this factory is being run or is owned by someone who bought it and is in Limon. So I, I'm not necessarily sure that our job is done here, gentlemen. Um, it seems like we may need to go to Limon and see who is behind this factory. Uh, 
a question out of yes. character. Uh, part where we learned about uh, Inigua installing a monitoring system in this factory. Did was that the prelude stuff that we don't know about? I don't. I didn't separate this part. Yes, that was <clears throat> that was part that you didn't. Okay, don't that your know. characters okay. don't know about. However, you did learn. You did learn from the Badgers uh, before you had gone inside that because uh, you had mentioned that he was found dead, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we had seen him." You know coming in and out the past couple of days okay. and you would find you found that weird that the badgers had gone in and not come out but he was able to go in and out very easily okay well that's another link for us to go to the uh the moon how far away is that Lamon is uh, about a couple hours ride. So the question would be, when would you want to arrive? During the day or during the night? Or are you going to do anything else in Cigna before you go? Um, Cigna's got a militia building. So I can check in there and see if there's anything about hallucinogen, the hallucinogens uh, that have been found in the air. If anybody in the area has been found in possession of them, if anyone has noticed any unusual behavior that might be connected to him, to them, to the drug use. Yes, you could do that if you wish, yeah. I remember uh, one of the... One of the militia at the barracks said he was going to uh, reinvestigate the silos at where they found Unigwe's body. As well, if you wanted to go with them. Uh, yeah, so if... Nobody else has any uh, better idea of what to do in their time in the uh, lovely city where we just killed some brains uh, in the factory. It was in self-defense. Of course it was. Well, we, uh, we entered the building and they attacked us, so it was self-defense. Other than that, is that uh, checking in on that body to see if the uh, transit's uh, going to get it there in time? Before you mentioned that there was a body that was going to come up and get to processing. Yes, by by this time, by the time that you had done your, your deed at, at the factory, they should have already come and gone. They were only a couple hours out. Okay. They should have got that before we woke up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's go investigate. Um, yeah. And, and I, I assume it's easy enough to find the, the farm and the silo and without having to track back to the town and find the militia people and go with them? Actually, yes, the silos are fairly uh, easy to spot, especially from where you're at, at the, the old uh, Bakesi factory. And the badgers can indeed point you in the way, or in the you know general direction, and Rowena will will pass on that. You know they can actually direct you all the way if you want. Um, just a general point us in the right direction should be good enough. Yeah. So she just kind of they she points off to the east. Um, you can see there's three noticeable dormant, you know, uh, silos, more sprawling fields. Uh, it doesn't take you more than, you know, half an hour to get there walking. 
you're sticking on the the opposite side of the the river and uh, as you start to roll up you not only do you start to see the silos but you see uh, three dormant agricultural constructs again these aren't the the normal constructs that you would see within the cities you know doing the sweeping and taking out the garbage stuff like that these are like that hulking mass that you had seen in the uh, in the factory. These are multiple, multiple bodies put together into one large construct, and there's three, three of them just sitting idly in the fields. Shouldn't they be hoeing or tailing or something like that? You, you guys make constructs. What, do, what do you guys think? I, I, I just kill things. Yeah, same here. Don't look at me. Screw the dealer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a card game. Ha <laughs> jokes. Uh, Ren, you would know that at least under normal circumstances, if something bad happens, they usually power them down. And definitely a suicide in the area would be would be a means to at least stop them for a day or two to figure out what happened. Gotcha. Okay. Then, um, so I would know that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still catching up from missing a week and I'm a little bit lost. I apologize. Okay. Um, so would I, I would know this and then I guess I would tell the group this so that they understand. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, As you guys get closer and closer to the silos and kind of make your way past the the constructs, they don't move when you when you come by. They're totally totally stood down. You can see that the boilers on their backs are uh, the pilot lights are still on, but they are not powered up at all. And uh, as you get closer and closer, you start to see yellow like police tape. It doesn't say police like it used to back in the the old world. It's more or less just a bunch of yellow string tied up. Uh, and standing kind of off to the side is a, a man that looks like he's in some type of like maintenance uniform. Maybe like a mechanic or something. So he sees you and kind of like waves. Not waving you down, but more like, hey, I'm here. I'm heading over to him. Hey, so... Let's see what's up. Y'all gone inside yet? He goes, ah, y'all must be the the people from the Citadel. The militia, are, that yes. militia call said you'd be coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's going on with the farm now that, that he's passed? Is, is anybody taking it over or anything? Or Oh, you mean this site? Yeah. Well, this site is actually owned by the town itself. Cigna owns it. Hmm. It is a, a communal agricultural site. Yeah. Given the recent happenings here, we had to kind of shut down, making sure that everything's safe. The name's Anselmo. There we go. Couldn't find it. <laughs> So in some has anybody been inside today? No, no one's been inside. I'm the only one, only one out here these days. All right, mind if we take a look around? Oh, by and by. All right. And uh, which one of the silos was it again? So these are are large. They're not like the not like silos you can go in. They're like the you know, like corn silos. They would fill up with uh, with actual grains. Okay, but he was found in, inside one of them, right? No, he was found hanging from from one of them. So he wasn't inside; he was hanging outside. Correct. 
Which one was he hanging from? Now, as you as you look at it, it's the the one in the middle, uh, the one with the the yellow string kind of wrapped around a little, probably a little fifteen by fifteen foot square in front of the silo. Uh, there's a beam that shoots out. You know the beam that uh, I don't I don't know farm talk, but you know the little shoot that comes out of it, and they you know they. Back in the day, or actually not back in the day now, but they would pull up a truck and it would shoot the grain in from the silo. Mm-hmm. So like that little arm, there's a a rope hanging from that beam. This is potentially an opportunity for me to showcase one of my special abilities. Oh. Um, iron stomach. Oh. <laughs> so I can adjust any type of food. Uh, basically what I want to do here is is see if the corn on the one that he was found dead on um, is still good. So I'm going to eat some, which I'm going to assume that nothing happened. Well, I know by rules, rules is written, nothing happens to me, but maybe I would know, I'd be able to at least tell if something was bad with the corn. Mm. So, so you eat some of this. Uh, again, because of your power, nothing, nothing bad happens to you. But it does have a slightly tainted flavor not as if it's been tampered with, but as if it's kind of been sitting there for a, maybe maybe too long. Wait. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, something's. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing what I just did. Something's. Uh, this, this corn's a bit. It's a bit old. Um, I'm gonna ask. I want to ask uh, the fellow around um, what that's about. Well, the militia hasn't been back out to investigate the area, so we've had to shut down the, the facility. And without the constructs running to, to move the grain, it's just sitting there. And you know how it is out here in the wild. The weather is crazy. Just a little bit of moisture in them silos, and it just goes bad. You don't you don't think anything like nefarious then around the corn itself? Oh no, no. Okay. This is not the first time it's happened. I mean, we just arrived last night, and that's when we were told that it happened. Is that not the case? Is that has it been more than just two days? I think we've been shut down for about three or four days. How long did it take them to get the body into the? Because well, you see, that's the funny thing. We had shut down prior to them finding the body. I don't know the reason. I'm just the maintenance guy. They tell me to keep up on the constructs. I keep up on the constructs. Well, where one, where might we be able to find out why you shut down earlier? Oh, uh, you'd have to ask the militia on that one. <clears throat> so just be here, it was the militia that shut down the facility prior to this happening. Well, I don't know. I don't even know about that itself, but. Has this happened before where you've just randomly been shut down by the militia or someone? Usually if an order comes from the Citadel specifically, then they would be the ones to enact that, that order. You know, the militia does work as their outside arm. But I'm saying, is this like the first time this has happened? No. No. In these strange circumstances, yes. (laughs) Usually we don't find bodies hanging around. Just walking around. Hanging around. But I like where you're going. (laughs) Um, So, like, maybe... I feel like now maybe there's additional information that the Citadel has not given us about the situation here. And I'd like to look at the rope. Like, get up there and take a closer look. How did the guy get the rope up there? Was there any signs? Give me, sir, a roll. But I will tell you in a moment once I find my sheet. <laughs> you want it to be uh, clubs for intelligence? Give me... No, I want 
Yes, clubs, uh, investigation. All right. I don't have that, but I do have a club. There you go. That's all you need. So looking at this... uh, We'll do mystery crime scenes music. Mm. So looking at this rope, it, it looks kind of generic. Something you might find around any type of machine shop uh, in in town. It actually looks similar to one of the, the yellow ropes that is used as this makeshift police cordon. Um, but looking at it a little bit more, you realize that there are other ropes hanging around one of the, the smaller outlying buildings. And it's used for hanging dangles uh, from angled beams protruding out of one side of the silo. Doesn't seem anything exciting other than how he might have got it down. You don't see any ladders or anything around. Apologies out of character. Do we figure out we're, we're sure it's a suicide or we're confident or is that still being figured out? Like, according according to the militia, it, it was a suicide. It, there weren't any, uh, you know, no defensive wounds on the body. Uh, they had found him exactly as they pretty much determined. There, there's been no official investigation yet. You guys are really the first official Citadel people on site. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you uh, continue to look at this rope and you know follow it up to the to the silo. You follow it back down and you see where the the actual noose is right underneath it is an overturned wooden box. It's one of those good hefty boxes that probably sits up about three feet. So whether it was him, he himself, or someone else, they knew that that, the, that good three feet is not going to be touching the ground anytime soon. So the box was like kicked over like he kicked it over himself. Right. I'm just going to like upright the box and step on it and see how difficult it would be for somebody to do that just to make sure that it would have done been done by himself the box is hefty but it's not too heavy enough to where one person couldn't have done it uh and without trying to do it yourself given how wet the ground is in some places you could easily just move back and forth and tilt it over uh, it okay. might take it might take a couple of you know tries back and forth, but you could definitely do it yourself. Okay. Uh, okay. One thing that you do notice when you do pick up that box and stand it back upright is a, uh, a crumpled piece of paper laying underneath, like where the box had smashed it into the into the mud. I open it up and look at it. So it's kind of it's kind of wet. Some of the words have have bled off. The top margin appears to be torn away. But what you can read is, at which point, pour it all into the tank of the operating nervous system of the old Bekesi factory and activate the boiler switch. Do it and you and I will be even. You will find them at Lamon when the jukebox is on. Go for the, re- go for the reward, LF. Signed LF. Okay, do it for you and me, or do it for me, and you and I will be even. And what about the reward? Uh, You will find it, just says you will find them at Lamone when the jukebox is on. Go for the reward. Signed LF. Okay. I show the rest of the group. 
Do we know, do we have any names that would coincide with LF yet that we know of? LF. Not that we would know. Yeah. Okay. Only from our pre-game stuff that we don't know. From the precognition. All right, so... We're, we're going to the moon. Um, yes, obviously the biggest thing in this note for you guys would be Lamone. And um, the fact that it talks about pouring things into tanks with nervous systems. At that factory. At that factory. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what do we know about Lamone, really? Like, as far as... I mean, have any of y'all ever been to Lamon? Would we have? Or probably not. Probably not. Uh, but what you do know, it, you could easily ask the, the mechanic, uh, the maintenance guy, or, or anybody else, and maybe you have even heard of it uh, just by talking around in the, in the Citadel. It is a fairly uh, well-known kind of subsection of Cigna. It still falls under Cigna. But the reason that they call it Lamon and it's kind of thought as its own little province is because of the very high class club slash restaurant that is there called the Lamon. Definitely has a jukebox in it. I'd be willing to bet. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Mystery solved. So I feel like that's our uh, our next our next stop. Yeah, the Lamon. I'm gonna walk over to the mechanic and be like, "Hey, so uh, what do we know about who?" Uh, and I'm gonna mispronounce his name again because I always do. Um, as the player, not as the character. The character would get it right. <laughs> Unigwe. Unigwe. <laughs> Yes. So, um, did, like, what did you, you need to do for fun? Well, I mean, I, I didn't really know the guy personally. He occasionally came out here and worked on, you know, he was a, he was a handyman. He did work with a couple of fellers that I knew that, that worked out of a place called, uh, you ever heard of a place called Limon? Well, I, I've heard of it. Um, so, but like nobody in town really knew that he would like hang around with or associate right. with or just. I don't know for sure, and I don't I don't like to gossip, but he was uh, he was fairly friendly with uh, with Marina. I can certainly understand that she's easily uh, an easy person to be friendly with. Um, I guess I can always go and uh, she might know more um, about him and maybe we can help get to the bottom of why this happened and you know, hopefully we won't have to get another situation like this again pop it up anytime. I thought the man was a fairly nice man. He did keep to himself, but when he did talk to him, he was seemed okay to me. Didn't seem to cause any problems. He was spending a lot of time out there at the Kessie factory, but yeah, yeah, we 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 are we've gathered some information about that. Um, so when do you think the so if what's going to happen with all this uh, corn and grain and everything? facility shut down for the next couple of days well hopefully if the militia can get their investigation all cleaned up then uh i'll be able to turn the constructs you know and they they consider the area safe be able to turn the constructs back on and they'll be able to siphon through most of what we have but you said it was shut down before it was before the incident with a unique way oh yeah yeah so was there another incident that happened, maybe, that would have caused things to shut down, or...? Not that I know of. I mean, this is... This is Cigna. We're out in the wild. Nothing really 
other than this poor fella, nothing really exciting happens out here. So, uh, uh, I thank you for your time. I'm not a problem. Out of character. Uh, is the uh, Limon further away? Like, if we went in the same direction as Limon, would we pass by the militia headquarters as well? Yes. Or are they in opposite directions? No, oh, you, okay. you would pass, yeah. You'd have to pass through the main town. Especially if you didn't want to walk, because you would need to go get your little steam powered car. So, do we want to do a quick pit stop at the uh, militia before we go to Limon just to see if they will give us why it was shut down beforehand, see if it had anything to do with it. Might want to stop at the toy factory, talk to Marine again, uh, see if she might know anything about what's going on. That letter sounds like, you know, the Negro was doing something with someone in the Limon that maybe he might have said a few things to her that she might that he might not have said to other people that might help us with figure out who we're looking for because at this moment we're just walking into a bar so do we want to do both I mean yeah but I mean if this was shut down and the reason it's not open is because he because there was the investigation into his um, being unalive and it was shut down before he became unalive then maybe there's something they know um, that can help us up as well they're both on the way to where we're going, especially if we're going to get that car. Yeah, let's do it. If, if, if that's if the car's the right word for that thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we can go and see what we can do. All right. You all going to go together or do you want to split up? Is there one place that you want to go first? You want to hit the, to the the toy maker first or the militia first? I figure whichever is closer. Closer yeah. would be the, closer would be the toy maker. It is the big building in the little settlement. I mean that's whatever one is on the way. So if the toy maker yeah. first, toy maker. Exactly. I figured we just straight shot it. Whatever was first, whatever was second, and then the moan. All right. So you make your way back to the toy maker. <clears throat> and uh, as you walk in, you see Marina sitting behind the, the makeshift bar area. that used to be the toy stores, you know, register area. And she goes, oh, oh, you've returned. I take it your investigation is going well? Well, well it's, it's civil going. business, really, so, but, yeah, it's, we're working on it. There, there's a couple of things that, I don't know, maybe you could help us out with um, that might make things go a little bit smoother for the investigation. I mean, I've pretty much told you all that I know. Well, so it looks like what was happening in the factory may Unigua may have um, been involved in some manner involved well, I mean he he was a repairman I I assume that he would be involved in the factory somehow right now I, from my understanding the factory is owned by someone in the moon though is that correct oh I I honestly have no idea. Did did he ever, you know, talk to you about any of his work or who, anybody who you worked with out in the loan term, maybe? Well, as I, as I said before, his business often did take him, you know, further into Florence. Uh, the one place that he did go was was Lamone. That's the, you know, the 
the nice exclusive villa that's out there. And he, like I said, he he worked there for a couple months as a waiter, but other than that, I don't really know. Hmm. Give me oh. a uh, <clears throat> if you want to try and get more out of her. Give me. Not manipulate. It's not what I'm looking for. But you have interrogate, don't you? I do have interrogation. If you wish to try and get force it out of her, you may uh, you may give me an intimidation. Is that your gear? Um, yeah. So I'm going to use the uh, cold reading. Uh, method of interrogation mm -hmm. where you you say things and you kind of judge them by their the reaction okay all right and gear um, spades spades so if I only have one spade in my hand I, I'm gonna add a three of diamonds to that that five of spades so I have an eight so I have two successes correct so that I can maybe get a little bit more out of her um, see see what we can get as far as you know what she might know uh, primarily about any person in particular at the Limon that he might have mentioned he, uh, knowing because we're looking for a contact because otherwise we're going into the city cold or the, the bar cold. So you, you kind of grill her for a good 20, 30 minutes and she bounces back uh, with as much information as she can. Uh, but over time you see her start to, you're, you're wearing her down. And then she goes, she just kind of breaks. Not not into tears or anything, but she just kind of gives up as if maybe she was trying to hide something. Maybe she wasn't. She goes, all right. Other than what I've told you already. Let's just say that Lamone, although I've never been there. Unige would, you know, he'd always tell me about, you know, the, how the place was cold and he would always talk about it very absentmindedly. More of like if he was talking to himself than to me. And often in these conversations, he'd repeat this strange word. And it's a word I've never heard before. It's like, like juke books. Juke books. Hmm. Ah, I thought it was Jackabox, so. That, that, is, that is an odd word. Um, Jacka. Every time he box. said that, he would always just, he would just be staring at nothing. But I could tell that that word caused him great discomfort. But then when I asked him about it, he would just completely change the subject. Maybe now, I know from my own, I mean, I'm sure that you've learned by now that myself and Unigwe were closer than just friends. We had a, we had a, call it a small personal relationship. Nothing solid. Fair enough. But I know that on one, more than one occasion, When he had come back from Lamone, he was not the man that he left as. So I did my own little snooping around. Now I couldn't get much, which is very frustrating because I tend to know a lot around here. 
but Lamone is just outside my grasp. And even using, yeah, don't tell anybody back in the Citadel, but using some of your guys' contacts, I was able to find one name. Levo Philly. Levo Talit. Philly. <laughs> yeah, Livio Philly. In other words, LF. So now we finally have a connection. Huh, thank you. Uh, do you know anything about it? just a name or do you know anything about Livio? Uh get you that as soon as I find it. <laughs> uh Aha. So she'll uh, she'll kind of show you her notes that she's got written on, you know, different pieces of paper. And a lot of the stuff is very general. Uh, founder of Lamon, uh, and then it's kind of like a little subcategory Lamon uh, exclusive fine dining. Uh, what this, what she's been able to get personally is that uh, he had lost his family in a domestic accident and uh, was actually committed to an institute for a while because he was just, he just had crippling grief. But when he had gotten out was when he, you know, reestablished this Lamone fine dining experience. He's very interested in reawakening the consciousness of the departed. That's like his, his big thing. Thank you. That's very helpful in, in our investigation. Um, I don't really, know? I don't really know what that last part means. That was just what I was able to find. Mm. I'll That's make sure that. I'll make sure that your cooperation is noted when the report to the Citadel. Well, I would so hope so. Um, as as far as um, just to just to wanted to rule something out, the farm had been um, shut down before Unigwe's passing. Is is from my understanding? Is that correct? It had, I I was not aware of this. Huh. All right. Uh, Who had told you this? Um, the mechanic guy, uh, Alfonso, uh, em Emilio. Uh, I, I, I'm bad with names. And so Selmo. <laughs> yeah, him. Yes. yes, everyone who's watching, all of these names are in Italian. Some of them are very hard to pronounce for me <laughs> and remember. <laughs> took me three um, sessions for me to start taking writing names down all right so um, what time of day is it is it is... Uh, it's it's getting into late uh, afternoon early evening like four because you had entered the, uh, the factory when it was midday so you could yeah. get the good lighting yep um and you said it was a couple hours to Lamone, is that correct? Yes, you could get there uh, probably around eight o'clock. Without going to, stopping at the militia though? Uh, even even stopping at the militia, you could probably get there by yeah, eight o'clock, eight, okay. nine o'clock. If you had a watch. And that would be a reasonable dinner hours for a fine dining establishment. 
It probably would, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what are you guys thinking? Do you want to figure out if we can find out what happened with the farm, with the militia, or do you want to just hit straight there? I think we should just go straight there. I want to play some beats in the jukebox. I think it's pronounced Chukibos, but yeah. And I definitely, totally, and absolutely remember to write down that uh, that note on the silo about so, the jukebox. Um, that does lead, leave the unanswered question of why the farm was shut down before. Oh, that's true. That, see, that's, if they, I mean, he seemed to think that that order would have had to come from the Citadel, <coughs> and given that we're Citadel people and that we don't know about that, makes me think that no one around here is going to know about that either, and that's going to be some higher level than us that is not intended for our knowledge, or for one reason or another, or it just was overlooked because it wasn't critical to our mission. That's my guess. Um, I'm happy to hear other opinions. It was never, just to be clear, it was never mentioned to you guys in any of your pre-brief or anything like that. Well, when the person involved in the factory who passes on the farm has connections to what's happening in the factory and connections to a guy at a bar who I had been, uh, have picked up somebody who has taken drugs out of there. Who has bringing constructs back, giving them back their memories is not a good thing. That is something that needs to be investigated. So if what's happened at the farm being shut down is connected to that we at least owe it to ourselves before we walk into the bar to know what else we can find out I think it's uh, a little on the nose to just call back to uh, set it all right now and just ask see what see what we get out of them if nothing else if we call back to the Citadel and they say they gave no such order then that does make for an interesting conversation if we go to the militia. All right. Yeah. Plus, if uh, anything happens to us, at least then we'll have sent back word of what's been going on. So, are you guys going to contact the Citadel? Who would be the most appropriate person to do that? Probably Jebediah. Well, I have no uh, tech, I have no communication uh, skills. So Jebediah would probably be the most professional about it. But <laughs> Icarus has been the one with the radio. Gonna say <laughs> the radio, <laughs> the radio. <laughs> right. So yeah, Icarus would radio to the Citadel. They're asking <laughs> bluntly. Oh, hey, what are you here? Who are you going to call? Mm. Is Ghostbusters an option? Is, <laughs> is Construct Busters an option? No, mm. but what I'm going to do, this is not in there. But I'm just going to throw my own flare on this. I'm going to roll a D8. Draw an eight sided card. Yes. Uh, so yeah, who who do you want to speak to about this? Uh, hmm. Who are you trying I, to get in contact with? I, I, I figure. Know? I figure I might have knowledge of who of someone within the militia and who would be giving orders out here. Um, at the very least, if not, 
I would suggest that we contact the person that gave us the mission. And Inspector Minetti would be your your best bet since he's the one who sent you out here. I, I would hope that Inspector Magnetti has... Uh, you could call uh, the engineer uh, Bertoli and talk to you before you had left. Is there someone like a step higher than the inspector? Is there like a senior inspector? No one that you had spoken to, but there are. You don't break the chain of command. All right, all right. Fine. Really, the only two people that you would, <clears throat> other than your, uh, like your little backstory stuff, the only people that you had spoken to in the Citadel before you left was Inspector Minetti, who had given you the, the missive to go out here and find out what was going on, and then uh, Engineer Bertelli, who gave you the, uh, like all of your cover details as maintenance individuals. Which we have forgotten and ignored. You have totally not used it all. <laughs> you just be like, yeah, we're from the Citadel, guys. Tell us what's yeah. going on. I I initially wasn't wearing armor. Yes, mm-hmm. this is correct. You were. <laughs> but now you are stomping around. Yeah, <laughs> we, we kind of all just went to hell after that factory. Okay, look. Stealth and subterfuge are not our, our strong points, okay? Stealth is when you beat them up before they're able to hit you back, right? Mm-hmm. It's when you punch them before they see you. Right. Um, same thing, same thing, yeah. yeah. Yep. If they see you and they punch them and you punch them before they punch you back, that that's that's not stealth. That's that's uh, called a one hitter quitter. <laughs> Brock hmm. believes those two things are one and the same. I feel like we should contact the inspector. Yes, inspector. Inspector. Okay. Let's see if you can get a hold of the inspector. Even Zerad's Icarus. Hmm. Do, do, do. Extra random. Here we go. Evens. That is a two. So you are able to somehow... A lucky number. Ho, ho, ho. Hoo-hoo. Okay. Have gotten contact with him. Yes, you were able to get into contact with the inspector, Inspector Manetti, the man who had initially sent you sent you out. His voice comes in really, really crackly. Icarus slams a fist on his radio. (laughs) And uh he's just kind of like, hello? Hello? Inspector? Inspector Manetti? This is he? Who, who is this? Look, this is... This is Icarus, part of the group that you sent out to, uh... You know, investigate some going nons. Uh, uh, it's about time you guys had reported in. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is the radio, um... Vocal so that all of us can hear it? It yeah, it's, yeah it's, let me it's put not, the radio yeah. on speaker, turn some dials. <laughs> is, it, is it a radio right? on speaker? Put a speaker or... on there, get, a, yeah, get re- one of those I mean, old school microphones. Just go remember bump, the, bump. the world, it's, you know, it's, it's not a radio as in, you know, what we would think of now. It's probably a mishmash of different components from different things. It and is. it's probably about the size of like a book. Like you have to open and op- open up the book and then stick up an antenna and it's got a little, you know, a little hand walkie. I'm imagining a car radio is involved somewhere in the contraption. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we can hear. Oh, yeah. And say this. Inspector, this is Jebediah. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you telling me you didn't get the report that we made around uh, shortly after midday? I did not. You pass it off to another department? Uh, they, they, we reached out to the first person that we could connect with. You apparently were unavailable when we sent that in. Um, so, as far as, so you didn't get that report then? Stand by. 
the light, it just goes static. You hear it pop back on, and it goes, thanks a lot! And <laughs> he's yelling at somebody else in the background. Yeah, ah, uh, yes, I have it right here. <clears throat> so the um, person in in Cigna who was unalive, um, who was found un- unalive the, the day that we arrived, um, we have reason to believe that they had, that person had connections with the events within the factory. Upon investigation, we found that his, the farm where he was working, um, which we had been told was shut down production because of his passing, had actually been shut down several days prior. Shut down prior? In yes. order like that's going to have to come from the Citadel. Stand by. Thank you. And like more static, you can actually hear like other other words come through, but it's like a, a bleed in from another frequency. If only I had time to construct a second radio. Listen to both at once. And then, uh, and then it kind of pops in again, and you hear him yelling at someone else again. And he's just yelling about, well, what do you mean we don't know who sent out the the report? Give me a name. No, now. Like, men, are you still there? We're here. So it seems that the order did come from here. However, no one knows who, which is a little unnerving, if you ask me. I'm going to look into this personally. Is there anything in the order uh, as to the why? Uh, due to maintenance. Due to maintenance. Lovely. Um, as our direct supervisor, I assume you have authority to allow us to relay a message that it is clear to be reopened now. Absolutely. Thank you. I will get that sent out. Within the hour. We will give the local militia a heads up as that the order is coming in uh, before we uh, head to our next location to follow up. Uh, we will check in when we have anything worth reporting. And where am I ask you guys are going? Um, this place called the Lamone. The Lamone? Now, if you guys go there, don't be causing any trouble. I personally have interrogated a suspect in possession of hallucinogenic substances who acquired them at the Limon. The unalive individual had a note indicating that he was to put a substance um, that would taint and cause the issues at the factory signed by somebody indicating that they were to meet at the Limon. And from what I can tell from Marina is involved with the operations of the Limon. And I understand this. And I do wish for you guys to look into it. We need to solve this thing as quickly as possible. We are starting to get pushback from overhead. However, Mr. Philly has many political ties. And I wish not to make a scene of this. Be tactful if you get my drift. Are we talking having to find new avenues of employment or having to not worry about that because that will be happening for us sweeping streets and (laughs) fields. 
nothing of that magnitude. Okay. Thank you for your time. It, I will let you go and about back about your business. Once we have more to report, we will check in. Understood. Keep me informed. Whatever the appropriate sign off is, I will, I will sign off. Um, and then. In the old world, they used to say something called, uh, they used to throw up twos. Twos? Twos? Something like that? Oh. Twos. <laughs> twos? Even earlier, Jesus. they used to say rocker, rocker. Yeah. Rocker dad. Uh, mm-hmm. Tooses? Tooses. Yes, Tooses. Tooses. Throwing up tooses. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get this turned back on. Um, we will let them know of what Ren found, uh, in that corn silo. They should probably may want to investigate the others and then we'll moan. Unless either of you, any of you have any. Oh, uh, can we have done one final thing just because making sure of something make sure that that body did in fact get sent back to citadel rather than if something screwy was going on since there's so many other things going screwy going on yes you guys can can swing by uh old man smith's and down in the basement <laughs> but making sure that it actually went to the citadel i'm talking like just having Oh, like ret- while we were talking to the inspector, the yeah, retroactively having just oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that was one of the things I remember. You guys did call that in to ensure that it was being picked up. Uh, you were ensured that it was being picked up by members uh, of the builders. We just want to now make sure that it did get, in fact, picked up by it, them. It was. It was indeed. Okay. It was. We're not going to find this body when we go to the Lamone, no. walking around <laughs> with memories of itself screaming, "Kill me!" No, nothing of that sort. I mean, it was a handyman, so we could probably work on the the car thing. Um. Okay. All right, so yeah. Um, do we know of, besides the Lamone, the bar, Lamone in general, it has a place that would be reasonable for us to park up for the night? No. Like I said, the, the Lamone is, it's located in the Florentine Hills, so it's, it's just outside of Cigna. But it's it kind of sits it's like that that one random have you ever seen those really nice casinos that sit out on the water in hong kong or in china no it's like right. one nice building out in the middle of nowhere okay all right so we we have to so our plan is to go now at this time of night and We'll be back here deep in the dark of the night. Um, or we could get a get rest, make any plans we might need. It is a fine dining establishment, and some of us might not be dressed for that um, type of location. I don't know what you're talking about, Stomp Stomp. <laughs> Chris looks down at his rags. I'm dressed to impress. And since Here this you. is supposed to be a little bit more clandestine, yeah, I guess we can do uh, entering the facility without. Perhaps we can talk to Marina and see if she actually has like layout details of the entire building. Wait, I'm sorry, say that again? If we can go back, talk to Marina, and see if she got layout details of the building, blueprints, or ah, I figure if it's a it's if a fine dining establishment, that I bet you somebody at the militia has been there to eat. 
could ask. So yeah, let's um, let's check into that. Let's go to the militia and check into uh, mm-hmm. see what we can find out. All right. So from the toy maker, you head over to the militia headquarters in Signa, the militia barracks, and you see the uh, two individuals that were there before. Uh, we're just going to call them one and two because their names are very difficult for me to, <laughs> to, to uh, pronounce. We'll call them A and B. All right. So, uh, we'll relay that um, there's a, there will be a mission uh, order en route to have the farm reopened. And, um, Ren, what was it? What was the thing with the corn? Somebody uh, not being right? Just that it's it's old, um, because they had it shut down. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit confused if there's a uh, because grain stays for a while, so I don't know if that's a uh, just a difference of a opinion in real life of how old it takes for corn to go bad or if there's something more to it, or if it's just like a misinterpretation of of uh, grain timing, because it was only like two days. If that makes sense. Did that make sense? It made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just that the grain goes bad quickly out here. Oh, because the moisture. Oh, that's right. And, it, and it's been more than two days. Yeah. Oh, it's been, yeah, okay. That's right. So catching up again. And but, so we're just getting it started so they can redo, take out whatever's bad, you know, sort through it, actually use it. We already sent that out. So the grain is okay now, yeah, I believe. Had it not been corn, I would suggest that it might have been contaminated with a psychoactive substance. I don't think corn naturally does that normally. <laughs> well, we'll find out Some if grains people do that. start to. Uh, yeah. Wander around in the streets in their knickers. Yeah. I mean, if you guys go to Limon and then come back, people are just going hog wild. Then we'll know not to eat the grain. Right. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, so, any of you guys ever been to uh, this place, Limon? We're thinking about checking it out. Uh, maybe tomorrow, hit it up before we head back to the Citadel. Um, we don't get out here that often. Heard some good things about it. What do you guys think? Yeah, so I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call this guy Art. His his name's really long. I think that's what I called him before. <laughs> right. uh, so Art's like, ha, the moon on our pay. You gotta be kidding me. I mean, but. At least, at least in the city, um, you know, some of the nicer places um, like to give us militia guys a free meal every once in a while. Let us know, you know, um, you know let us know that they appreciate the work that we do, and so that we know that it's good to keep that place in business. Because they'll feed us. <laughs> Not the Lamone. They have a, uh, call them a, uh, special clientele. Definitely not for the likes of us. They like their patrons clean. Ha! Who the hell does that? Well, that's, that certainly is unfortunate. That in mind, yeah, there's showers around here. <laughs> so, does anybody from the town go out there other than maybe to work? That is. You see, uh, the, the second guy is kind of like asleep in a chair. And, uh, Art kind of kicks him 
because his feet are propped up on a desk and he kicks his feet and he does that like half fall back. He goes, ah! Like, uh. Hey, Bassioni, do uh, you know anything about the Limon? He like, he like bites the drool off of his mouth. He's like, what? The Limon? What do you want to know about the Limon for? Well, we heard it's a nice place. Um, we don't get out here very often. We may not ever get out here again. Might as well check it out while we're here. Tell you what, well, I've never been there, but, but I mean, it's supposed to be a pretty, you know, pretty high class place. Food's supposed to be pretty good, at least from what I heard. Um, Unigwe, he's been out there a bunch. I used to work there, from what I remember. Yeah. Anybody else in town work there or used to work there? Anybody? Not that I know of. He had a good catch with that job. It's too bad he quit. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he was only working out there for a couple months. I think he was a waiter. He didn't really quit. He killed himself. Aha. Uh -huh. So does this guy not know how to character? Oh yeah, he knows. Oh. Yeah, both these militiamen know. Under the impression that he quit before, and he yes, that is to live for a period of time. That is my understanding as well. I don't know what your friend is talking about. To 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 his current set of of being unalive, um, for the time being. Ah, I like that joke too. <laughs> yeah, well, feel free to use it with your friends and family. Um, eh. as far as I guess that's, that's it um, we we did get in touch um, the Citadel um, it, if it hasn't come through already within the next hour or so there should be an order coming through to have the farm reopened um, so you may want to just double check the status of all the everything in storage as it's Apparently the weather out here is not good for leaving things unattended for several days. Uh, from what from what uh <clears throat> from what I've heard from uh you guys back at the Citadel and, and some of the maintenance guys up there, the yeah, the weather out here is a bit it's a bit muggy. So uh if the crop isn't moved fairly quickly, we do we have had problems in the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, whoever is working the farm, they want to let them know. Check it out. At least we know at least one of the silos is less than prime condition. So, all right. Well, I believe that's everything I needed. I wanted to check in with y'all before you know we let you get back to your jobs. Uh, y'all doing some fine work up here. See y'all y'all headed to Lamo. Are you guys all headed to Lamo? We're, th we're thinking about it. You got any compelling reasons we shouldn't head out with her? No, I'm just asking. I said high high class place. You guys might want to uh dress the part, I guess. Yeah, um there's some shops in town we, we that we can head up and got any recommendations? I mean, from, from what I've heard, it, you know, like when, when I say high class, I mean, not, you know, 
beat up rags like most of us have gotten. You know, maybe maybe a nice pair of jeans or a, a t-shirt with no holes in it would probably suffice to my to my understanding. You, you you get the same kind of salary as I do. You know quite well that that's not uh, something that I someone on my pay scale is going to have <laughs> in my wardrobe. Um, Think jeans are cheap? Come on. Oh, I know they're not. Uh, I mean, you could ask Marina. She might have something laying around. Maybe she got lost and found or something. Just leaves jeans laying around, you know what? No. Those are nice pants. Can't let those just lay around. Well, they're still good for a long time, even after they lay around for. Yeah, but you let them lay around, they go to waste. You gotta wear them. Nice pants. All right. So they tell you everything else they know about the Lamone. If you ask them any other tiny questions, most of it is non non helpful. Just like, yeah, you you should try the. I heard I heard they sell fish there. You should try it. Try the veal. So are we going to go on a shopping expedition now? And. Shopping a, montage. Shopping, <laughs> shopping, back, montage. shopping montage and um, back to Marina. See what she's got. Maybe take take a rest before we head over. All right. So when you guys head back to Marina and ask about clothes, she will automatically tell you that she has nothing that would be suitable for a place like the Lamon. However, because you had you know, pulled some information out of her and she feels kind of uh oh what's the word uh kind of embarrassed about it that she held it in and didn't share it willingly and just the fact that she had to tell you all about her personal stuff with Unigwe she will hand you her copy of his house key says, well, I know that he worked there. He probably has some nice clothes. And obviously he's not going to need them anymore. Thank you. Be a shame to let those jeans just lie around, yeah. Especially if they're Levi's. Levi's? Levi's. 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 Because it's quality that never goes out of style. All right. It is, nine, it is 9.30 now, which is our halfway point. So we're going to take a quick 10-minute break. Yes. Yes, so we're going to take a quick 10-minute break. That would put us at 9.43 Eastern Time. And then when we come back, we will... Uh, see what kind of clothing that our investigators can find in Igwe's house and then push on towards the Lamone. Before we go, I will just...
seconds. Four, three, two. And we are back, everyone, with our Kickstarter of Necrobiotic, the story named Out of Action. And just before we left, uh, Marina had given the key to Unigwe's house uh, so that our crew could find some nicer clothing if they were going to go to the Limon, as it is an upscale restaurant slash bar. And uh, cutting ahead, they were able to find some nicer clothes uh, than what they have on. Now for Brock, it is going to be a little bit difficult wearing nicer clothes and then trying to put on your suit. I was not planning on wearing the suit there because uh, since as they said we're trying to make this a uh, little low on the radar I'll be carrying my suit along with me but I will not be in my suit Okay. when we begin this I imagine this is a very large suitcase oh yes it's Maybe like on, 80 pounds like on rolly wheels oh yeah okay so if you guys do want to rest, you guys, well, actually, I'll, I'll ask this again. Do you guys want to hit the Limon in the morning or at night? Night would be when it's possibly busiest. Most likely it is, it is a restaurant. So we'd be less detectable, but there'd be more stuff going on that we need to not get distracted by. Correct. People who we may want to talk to um, might be well, perhaps preoccupied. We should, mm -hmm. Perhaps we should uh, figure out if slash when they have a set time where the jukebox plays and arrive then. That is going to be difficult information to figure out as most people around here don't even know what your juke books is. Jukebos, yes. Yeah. The... I'm, I'm not even sure I know what a jukebos is. The juk e-box. It's, it's a jucky box. Everyone should a know jucky what a box. box is. It's a juck in the box. Yeah, it could just be a giant children's toy for all you know. You know, a remnant of the old world. So yeah, um, look, I'm fine either way. Um, whatever y'all want to do, hell, we can. We've got the spending account from the Citadel. We can go twice. All right. So if you guys want to rest, I will allow you guys to rest. Uh, refill your hands if you want. Remember, if you're refilling your hand, you're throwing your entire hand away and redrawing all your cards. I'll leave that up to you whether you want to or not. And then we will head to Limon at prime time. As I said, it takes a little bit of time to get to Limon. But as you roll up on it, you see that it's a, a very beautiful estate uh, lit with torches, lanterns, as a, a parking lot crowded with different types of steam wagons, uh, construct horses, and the like. The main entrance is flanked by two well-dressed bouncers dressed in nice black suits, like the old, the old world silk black suits. A, a beautiful chrysanthemum pinned on their lapels. You would wonder to yourself where they got such beautiful flowers. And as you, uh, you get out of your steam wagon, start to head towards the entrance, you hear a, a slightly staggering soprano voice that, that spreads through the air coming from inside of the building. Endlessly in, you know, 
ancient melodies of of woe and and happiness all at the same time. You guys walk up to the entrance. Bouncers look you up and down, and since you you are dressed fairly nice. In the finest of levies. Yes. <laughs> uh, you think that you're good. But one of the bouncers, uh, one of them thinks you're okay. The other one really puts up his hand. He's like, uh, do you guys have a reservation? Uh, we're just visiting, passing through it. The... The locals in Signa didn't really give a clear indication how one would make a reservation. Well, this is the Lamon. We don't just let anyone come in. Anyone? Anyone? Do you know who we are? Do you know who I am? And Icarus like, walks up to the bouncer and like, very quickly just does a little like go-go behind his back. I am Levi. Maybe you've heard of my father. Haynes. <laughs> Haynes <laughs> Levi. <laughs> the bouncers both look at each other like, we have no idea who you are or who your father is. Oh. You. Unless your name is on this list, you're not getting in. What, can I see that list? It looks at you like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> I, can I uh, draw manipulation? I have that trained. Yes. How would you like to manipulate this man? Um... Oh boy, we've already tried all the classic TV tropes. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pay I, uh, out from our spending account. The machinist will uh, will give you a hint. I will still need you to roll manipulation or not roll, play manipulation. Think back to the clues that you have gotten. Perhaps in the clues that you have uncovered is a way to enter this building. Uh, we are here to meet with, uh, oh shit, no, I'm looking for LF. The LF, which is, uh, Levo Levito Feli. Feli. The proprietor of this establishment does not just see anyone. Exactly, we are not just anyone. And you are not on this list. There's, a, there's a good reason that we aren't on the list, but that's a little bit above your pay grade. If you do want to play that manipulate, uh, Ren, go, go ahead. All right, so it's hearts, which means I need to play up to eight. Okay. Um, so I have a six of hearts and a two of diamonds, so that gives me two successes, I believe. Two successes, that is correct. I will do that. Let's see what two successes gets me. So you guys keep pushing your, 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 trying to use your words to push your way in. And Ren, immediately you think of the, the, that word, that word that you guys were joking about on your way here, the jukebox. You're like, why, why is this so, so important? Was there a specific song named or something? Oh, no, no song, but just the, the word jukebox. Oh, was that something that Unigwe was? Yes. So oh, I'm just gonna, but yeah, I'll just, sir, I, I just need to, I need you to understand that I'm here to put a song on the, the jukebox. And he just goes, oh, oh. Well, if that's the case. He turns to his friend, he's like, you wait here. Follow me, gentlemen. It's more and, like uh, it. Yeah. One of them starts to lead you in. 
And he starts to lead you through this this villa. This very, I mean, this is very well constructed. This is something that needed a lot of money, a lot of care, and a lot of time to put back together. But it has been done, and it has been done very nicely. And he continues to lead you through the villa, kind of almost maze-like. Uh, you know, hallways, rooms. And he brings you to a dining room that's kind of separate from all of the others. And you see that a, a group of gentlemen are having dinner there. The bouncer shows you guys to the door doesn't say anything and just promptly turns around and walks away. You you see these uh, gentlemen sitting, uh, some of them with their backs to you so that you can't see their faces, uh, some of them sitting towards you. They don't seem to notice you as you're standing right, like right outside this door to this dining room. They're just having a, a nice casual conversation, it seems. I feel like we could split up here, two of us, maybe see what we can uh, manipulate our way into this conversation and maybe two of us uh, take off to uh, look around the uh, back behind the curtain areas of this place. Maybe see if... Uh, uh, Mr. Philippe has a room here that we can just meet him in when nobody's around. Does anyone have... Hmm. Well, I will say this to you, Machinist. I have a joker that I will blow if you need me to blow a joker on something. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't want to force you to blow it on anything. I just want an option presented where I can, if needed. If if such an option exists, I would like to know about it, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before any jokers get blown, um, do any of the men in this room fit the description that Marina gave us? For who? For Livio. Actually, For no. However, for uh, Ren and uh, Icarus, some of these men are dressed from individual, like like individuals that you you personally would have seen in the Citadel, whether it be builders or different scientists. Some of them are just dressed in you know nice suits. There's four or five of them sitting at the table. Would anyone happen to look like that fancy dressed man from back in the junkyard who dropped off that construct? Do you remember catching a glimpse of that man? Ah, that man. Do you remember what that man looked like? I want to say there was some sort of plume involved, but no. Uh, other than that, <laughs> my Joker might remember. <laughs> <laughs> my Joker might. You're talking remember. about the uh, maintenance guy from uh, outside the silos. No, this is specific oh, no, this was to Icarus's like, like yeah. entry entry oh, story. Oh, hold on. Uh, In the beginning. Oh yeah. no! I did very, very beginning. Because I just remember that he had a silk chrysanthemum lapel. Uh, I do. I did write that down. I just didn't write down his name. Kind of like how the bouncers were wearing silk chrysanthemums. Yeah, but he was related, sort of. Mm. Uh, it's all related. I, on, I all only. I only. Together. I only named him Investigate Junkyard Dude with Lapel. <laughs> Junkyard guy. <laughs> yeah. Investigate no investigate junkyard dash dude with silk chrysanthemum lapel. 
So while the rest of us might not know a potentially C connection, Icarus would certainly make it connection. Yeah, at some kind of subconscious level. Wait, chrysanthemum? I know I've seen that chrysanthemum somewhere. But because you cannot remember exactly what the man looked like, it's not going to help you. You can make the connection between the flower but not the man himself. However, anyone who wants to roll, I would say roll, I don't mean roll, I mean play. Hey, depending on how we do it, we can roll these cards out. <laughs> um, roll them in a dice tray, they'll roll. I want reasoning. Reasoning. It is steam, clubs. I have a little bit of reasoning here. I do not have that skill. I do not have that skill, nor do I have any clubs in my hand. I am reasoned out. You could play your Joker. (gasps) That'll give you an automatic success. Do we need more than the one? I don't know. Do you? And we do them collectively. Yes. Oh. If you if you do it collectively, it will count as multiple successes. Then a second success has been added. There's right. two successes. Been added. And my, my ten of diamonds is indeed my joker. I threw out my jokers from years ago when I opened this back, but Oh. <laughs> but that is my joker for this for this deck. Alright, so how many successes was that was uh one for Three. Brock? Three. Three successes. So you guys are listening in on this conversation. These men sitting around this round table talking back and forth. Uh, Ren, you are able to notice... uh, You kind of hear a little bit of what they're saying. And it kind of piques interest with you because they're talking... They seem to be talking about, like, constructs. You just hear one of them say, well, these violent hysterical episodes must be related to the anguish and confusion suffered during reawakening. Obviously. Regaining consciousness in such a state is, would be unfathomable and pain un- unimaginable. And you hear another one as they, they like start to get louder and you're starting to piece it all together. I, 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 I don't agree. And he kind of stands up as he says it. He kind of throws his drink down. And you can see that this guy is... He is dressed as a builder. He was seated, sat kind of at the head of the table. He's like, it is well documented that the lack of myocardial connection would prevent this. Sorry, I'm reading this <laughs> word for word. <laughs> While we have yet to explain why, we know that there must be some connection between the heart and the brain of the subject. And then, uh, yes, <laughs> thief, he's <laughs> accused. Uh, Icarus you see that all of these men are wearing the same lapel and because you had two successes correct Icarus I would have the one just the one okay so yes you see that all of all of these men are wearing that same chrysanthemum and uh you reach deep back into your mind's eye. And you do realize that the man that just stood up is the man that you saw in the junkyard. However, Brock. Yeah, he is. You notice you're not getting all of it. Not as much as, as some of the others are putting together. However, one thing that you do notice is the very last man. He goes, that's that's not right. I, I, I tell you, I tell you once, I tell you again. These violent hysterical episodes must be related. And you're like, where have I heard that voice before? You two go back and you think 
and you're like, wait a second. That's the voice of the guy that gave us our passes. That's that's Bertoli. The main you know, like the main maintenance guy at the Citadel. Sure. The main engineer. You can't see his face because he's turned his back to you guys, but you know that voice. So I feel like we are have fallen in, I have found a secret sect amongst the Citadel and others that are doing necromancy, basically. <laughs> I think that's how I'm reading this anyway. You could, Look, you I, could put it that way, I guess. <laughs> we're, we're already we're, doing necromancy. It's just I mean, now they're, they're alive. Talk, it, well, yeah, now like they they're know all, that. Their the entire society is based on necromancy. Well, yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah they're all bad. talking about the people regaining their memories, though. Right. Right. They don't seem to know, they don't seem to have that connection that we've gotten, though, that it's the psychotropic drugs reactivating their consciousness. Because they seem to be talking about it like they don't know the root. Because they keep on saying, like, no, it's got to be something, you know, with the heart, it's in the brain, and it has to be some connection there. And they don't seem to be able to say, no, it's drugs. It's drugs that are making them come back. Now we know how the heads of Futurama work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's all drugs. LSD. <laughs> so I feel like this would be a part where you, Ren, would want to be able to chime in to put in the two cents of what we know. Maybe see if incorporating that might just create this clandestine downfall of uh, uh, Levito because if they all realize that he's the one doing it maybe then this whole entire thing will just collapse onto itself for him since he's the one that seems to be bringing about yeah but I feel like we need to play this careful because we don't know at what level the Citadel as a whole or whoever is ultimately in charge is aware of this or whether this is some kind of secret sect Okay, so perhaps you guys, if somebody peeks listening in to see if they start giving in cues while we go and search elsewhere, or just all of us stay put for a minute. I mean, Jebediah was not paying attention and does not know about the conversation that was happening. Um, so he won't, he's not really in a position to comment on the fact that if there was a secret sect within the Citadel that had power to do something like that, they would have given us a direct order not to come here and investigate with the report that we gave. So, um, but, yeah, Jebediah has been looking around the room, not the room in question, but just kind of the right, the watching where we came from we're just keeping an eye out for anybody who seems to be noticing us question how close is what I'm wearing to what the servers wear and could I do a quick costume change based on what I'm wearing because oftentimes at places like this what you're wearing and what the servers wearing could be very similar and since you did get some of the clothes from uh, Uniguez you could probably grab a jacket do up a quick bow tie, and then you would look, you'd look like a waiter. All right, um, I feel like I want to be a little dangerous because I have enough uh, successes to do some uh, dexterity or some, uh, would dexterity be the good thing uh, for like pretending to be someone else or, or like, or that'd be more manipulation? This would either be, uh, yeah, either manipulation or firmness, maybe actually charisma. Charismatic, oh. are you? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> no, no I, I don't have that skill trained. Um, what is dexterity? Dexterity would be more like pickpocketing than or actually sneaking, but not pretending Correct. to be someone else. Okay, so maybe that's not a good move. 
I just have a couple of successes in that. Um, I'm out of manipulation. What else do I got? I could do three successes in spades, which is gear. Oh, what do I have for that? Advanced medicine and programming. That doesn't help me right now. I don't think. Yeah, for your, again, for your guys' skills. So, like, manipulation is like convincing others what you want them to, you know, to do what you want them to do. Uh, charisma is charming others. Empathy is understanding others' emotions or deciphering their emotions, creating bonds. And firmness is uh, your ability to resist manipulation. Hmm. What uh, what other uh, what other uh, types of successes are we looking at here in our hand in our uh, collective hands? Depends. For, it depends on the route you guys want to take. Yeah. For what you're describing, that would be a flash. It would be one of those four. Although appearance maybe fake an appearance. Appearance may help you. Yeah, because you can influence people with just your raw attractiveness, your physical appeal. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk in and be like, look at me. I'm too sexy for this shirt. Too sexy for this shirt. <laughs> Um, so what's our play here then? Because the owner is not in this group, I believe. So maybe no. it would be... So could we try and search to see if we can find his room? If he has, like... I mean, this is An his place. I would presume yeah. that he has, like, his own yeah, room, office here. The conversation at the table continues to go on and on. And while it doesn't come to, like, violence, you, you hear that, that some of them are starting to raise their voices and whatnot. And uh, every so often, when someone raises their voice, kind of calling out one of the other three, uh, you see three men dressed much like the bouncers that you didn't quite see as you were you know, looking in the room. You were focused on the people at the table. Uh, they kind of like move forward as if to like, you know, stop a scuffle if it was to start. There's three of these large burly men kind of standing there so that suggests that the owner of this place isn't necessarily in on it he's just providing a space for this meeting to occur and his employees are wanting to just keep the peace this is my read so it's just a bunch of guys just talking yeah I'm so gonna... yeah whether or not the the proprietor is directly uh part of this secret sect or whatever is maybe up, up for grabs still. I'm going to walk around the restaurant proper. Um, see if anybody catches my attention to matches um, LF's description um, and to see if anybody pays particular attention to me and what I'm doing. So as you're walking around the, the restaurant proper, uh, again, because this is a house, it's not like a, a proper restaurant that you would think of. It, it does have a main foyer uh, where the, uh, what's that guy called? The maitre d' would let, you know, assign you your table and whatnot. Uh, but most of the tables are in separate rooms. Most of the doors are open, so you could walk down a hallway and, you know, look in. Most people are just sitting there, you know, having their dinner, idly chatting. Is there a bar? There is a bar. I'll head to the bar. Is there an upstairs? There is an upstairs. Mm. However, at the top of those stairs, you see two more of those burly men with the black suits and chrysanthemum pins. Uh, is there any, uh, you said about stealing a jacket for the waiters. Is there any, uh, jacket that has that same lapel? 
laying around? Laying around? No, you have not seen one. Okay. So, uh, Jebediah, you head to the bar. The actual bartender is a construct. No. Uh, faceless mannequin, bow tie. Makes jerky move movements as it's shaking. Suppose uh, getting my martini stirred instead of shaking is not an option. It puts down the shaker. It pours out a martini into a martini glass. Takes a stir, but can't quite go in a circular motion. It's kind of like it, it makes like a star. It's very jerky. Every time it hits a point, it clinks the glass. Puts down the stir, pushes it towards you. I'll, I'll nod and as I take the martini glass and take a little sip while I look around the room. Now, because you're actually kind of like scoping out, you have a, a wider angle of foyer and the, uh, the bar area and some of the hallways that lead to the different rooms. You see more, like there are a lot of these bouncers walking around. More than you would expect at a restaurant. Yes, yes, <laughs> a restaurant, yes. Yeah, I thought so. Something high scale, may, maybe four, you know, two outside, maybe two, maybe three inside. You've probably counted about six or seven so far. Um. So question, or wise, what kind of uh, strength or anything do constructs have? Like, would a construct be able to fight a bouncer, or do they just have regular human strength, or um, do they are they able to withstand pain? I don't, like that as a question because uh, this would be an opportunity for me to show off a gear skill of the architect uh, by reprogramming a construct to do some ridiculousness right now to give us a diversion. But I don't know. I want to. I basically, I'm, I'm asking is like, what is a, a, a three success reprogramming of a construct give me? <laughs> and, what I'm uh, really asking is, what can I do? Okay. And, so and while he's doing that, uh, you said that they the lapels were on the jacket still. Uh, what kind of thievery would I be able to pull with uh, natural dexterity? Would I be able to pick like? pull some of these pins off so that we could wear them and kind of sneak our way up. You mean not like off of one of the passing? Yeah. You probably could. You're going it, to, it's going to be uh, a little complicated, but if I were to have three successes, would I be able to pull a couple of them off of people passing by? Yes, you would. Okay. I got a uh, Jack counts as four and, uh, a five, so that would be a total of eight, as long as you let me apply dexterity. Yes, it would be dexterity. It would be so that your fingers. So that would be a total of three successes. All right. So we will get to that in a second. That later on, yeah. As far as Ren goes, in your question, as far as the constructs, this is an interesting question. Because while you have always known that constructs feel no pain, as you're listening in on these conversations, it seems that they do. Or at least what some of these scientists believe. Ren is not, Ren has not come to a moral dilemma on that yet. Let's just say that from hearing, hearing this once. Okay. Um, as far as reprogramming. Yeah, I don't know if that, like, can I just do that by like typing in some shit on the fly or do I need to like have a whole workshop for that? I don't know. No, you do not need a whole workshop, but you are gonna have to physically touch the construct. Uh, and then it's gonna be based on whatever your skill is. 
Uh, yours is... So you can access the construct's programming to set up non-standard tasks or to inspect last commands. So it's not going to be like you can't reprogram it to go and uh, you know, go toss a table. Okay. But you would be able to reprogram the bartender to go and act as a bouncer. Very, very rudimentary things. Okay. Okay, I got it. Um, I want to reprogram it to make it look like it's malfunctioning um, under a normal task of bartending in order to cause enough of a, especially for a very high-end place like this, having having uh, any amount of a scene, I assume, is going to be a problem. So I would like it to, you know, it starts to pour the drink and then it just keeps pouring the drink <laughs> kind of thing. It starts going all over the and bar. Just like, yeah, something like that. And then it throws the, <laughs> and then it throws it at one of the... <laughs> It's one of the flaming cocktails. After it continuously pours the entire bottle, it lights the match to turn just the drink. Whoa, on man! Fire. I wasn't going that far. But I <laughs> like your, I like where Lighting you're going. Stuff on fire. <laughs> that would make a major issue, though, with a minor problem. Yeah, this so is mostly this... a planning. I, I'm talking about this out of character because I want to know what yeah. I'm actually capable of for for what our actual plan will be. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you could do something like, uh, yeah, reprogramming it to where it'll it'll pick up the glass, finish the drink, and then it just squeezes the glass and it breaks, and then it goes and makes the same one and then breaks it again. You know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So in character, how's the martini? Good. Very good. Nothing unusual about it. It's his top shelf. Anyways, yep. Uh, and is there anybody else sitting at the bar drinking, or is it just me? Uh, there are a couple of others, you know, nicely dressed. A uh, couple of uh, one couple. Male and female, uh, another couple, two males. Okay. Uh, They're just, you know, finally chatting, smoking some cigarettes, enjoying their drinks. Cigarettes either, are hard to come by. If, if either of them appear to be um, amenable, I'll, I'll do some small talk to, you know, Hey, you know, this, you know, how do you like the place? You know, it's my first time here. Um, we're traveling. Um, blah 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 blah. So uh, the the man and the woman will kind of be like, "Oh, is, is this your first time here?" This yeah, place it's is right. fantastic. This this is really my first time, you know, to the area. The, there's a, a business deal that you know, the company sent me out here to, to look into. The, the man goes, you know, when you say business, he goes, oh? Yeah, well, what, yeah. what business are you in? Um, we do private security mostly. Um, there was a, a couple of potential recruits um, that we were uh, looking into. Security. That sounds rather boorish. Does it make money? I mean, you, you look around this place, right? You, you can see the, the number of individuals that um, are, are working for this establishment. Are you men, be, you men that kind of stick out like sore thumbs. Yes, yes. Um, I, I usually, when I'm doing the the people that we work with, generally do a better job of blending in. But yes, um, you know, they make a decent amount of money. We make a decent percentage, and it's enough to send me on recruiting trips. Well, I guess it sounds profitable indeed. Yeah. Uh, when I'm done here, I'm off to Madrid. Wow. That is quite a travel. You, you're you you're from around here? You work here? Or you have business in the area? 
Oh, I, I, I'm from... I'm from Florence proper. But yes, we come here at least once a week. My wife and I. Well, that is certainly a glowing recommendation. The, the woman says, yes, you must try the veal. It is absolutely delectable. I will... I will take your word on that. And I'll hold you to it. I'll laugh as a, as a little joke. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to get any information out of here. I'm just trying to small talk so I don't look out of place sitting at the bar by myself. All right. I will jot that down. If anyone tries to scope you out, they will have a complication. Now for... Uh, Brock and your lapel pins that you're trying to get. Yes. So with your three successes, you are able to get three lapel pins. However, there is going to be a time limit before one of them notices that their pins are missing. Yes. I was planning on uh, seeing if uh, Icarus and JT uh, wanted to join me in going upstairs see if we can find the office you two actually have the know-how to actually be able to say good lies about mechanical aspects of it just figuring we state that I was bringing the giant suitcase of my armor upstairs to uh, Levito's office um with the the Hey Chris, you have some kind of remote radio type I, thing, correct? I have a drone and I have a radio to communicate right. with. Can I reprogram this thing and then use one of those radio frequencies to have Icarus set it off when we need it to? Set off the mis- mal- malfunctioning construct. Is that uh, allowable? That is not, because these things do not run off of like radio waves, they're strictly steam power. They what if I run off of the miraculous Wi-Fi? What if I created an object that released whatever needed to be released into the construct remotely? So it's got a little radio transceiver. It's got a little like. You never know what your players are going to throw at you, Dwayne. You want to release something that's going to physically be able to reprogram a construct. Based on well, what JT's specifications would be. You mean like LSD? What's like that? LSD. <laughs> like that whole thing they're doing. Oh, hey. <laughs> hmm. Uh, okay, if you wanted to uh, create like some type of time-delayed programming... Oh, yeah. Nice. Just put a time delay in your code. Right. Yeah, you would be able to do that. It would add a layer of difficulty to the successes. Uh, but that could be done. Okay. Um, um, so- I will, if you, if... Uh, because this is something that the uh, Technos office could help out with, um, if you would like him to lend you a success... I would allow this. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Think of it as a, like assisting in, in other games we've played. Teamwork. Yes. Teamwork. 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 Yeah. Okay. Teamwork. So yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just looking through my character sheet again to see if I've missed anything else. <clears throat> also, I have uh, the special ability politics. That I know how to move within the bureaucracy. Does that count uh, in this? Oh. And take advantage of your office as a lever in the city and in locations loyal to the scientific empire. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if I've been going about the stealth in the right way and walking in as I'm a citadel architect actually would be more useful right now. And watch this and then just program it. Which one is that? Uh, architect pre made. What's the uh, what's the special ability? It's called politics. It's underneath the ta- the first table on the first page. Oh, there it is. Oh, 
Okay. I had missed that so, before, and maybe I want to remember that I have This right now. would help you. So the the other builder that you recognize that was that's in that that party of of men talking about different constructs. If you were to do any type of uh, speaking with him, that would definitely you would have a, a foot up on him, making it less difficult to talk with him. Was Brock, did you already grab a lapel? Because I'm wondering if you gave me the lapel, we could like double whammy this with station and take a chance on whether or not this is a sect that everyone knows each other or not and take a chance on no, they don't. Well, I mean, that's fine by me. I was planning on giving it to you anyway. We just have the limited time after for noticing. So yeah. make a quick conversation. Okay. Does anyone else have any input? Otherwise, I want to set this thing to go off in like 15 minutes and then grab the lapel and go start a conversation while everyone else kind of like goes upstairs and figures out what's going on upstairs or whatever. Well, not all of us can, only three of us can wear the lapels. Yeah, got three, got three oh, we have, we have, oh, I apologize. Yeah. I missed that. Okay. And, and you well, were, I believe, one of the ones that were going to go upstairs because you had the knowledge of the constructs. Yeah. yeah. So. And I figured you have knowledge of constructs with Icarus and having knowledge, and I would basically be bringing my suit up as the uh, construct. This, this this is a nice big thing that we are bringing to Levito. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. To- I, totally, I, yeah. totally. Just to, for him, if he's not in the office, don't worry. It's important. We will wait. Okay. One last question then. Yes. Because this is going on a bit, and I yeah. apologize. No, that's fine. Um, I like it. Keep going. <laughs> um, I program it not for a time delay, but I can instruct Jebediah on press this when you need something to happen or something happens. Okay. That way, there still requires that physical contact on the bartender while you're sitting at the bar, and I will instruct Jebediah to do that. Okay. How are so, you? So let's work backwards. Okay. Need you to program this thing. So I'm actually going to need two different role or two different plays. Okay. I'm going to need. Uh. I might have the perfect cards for that because dexterity is the I'm doing this sneakily. Yes. I've got that two successes in that, and I got two okay. successes in gear. Okay. In the programming. And my you successfully uh, reprogrammed this thing to do exactly as you said, and no one noticed you. You just kind of like put your hand up on it and like looked in the back, like messed with a couple knobs. Yep. Good to go. Have a nice day. <sighs> um, and I'm going to tell uh, Jebediah um, what you want to do is uh, when, when the time comes to make something happen, uh, order. Uh, whiskey sour when it's ready okay when you want to make a when you want to make with I, I i will like explain this briefly in character but yeah basically when you want this construct to start malfunctioning order a whiskey sour and it will start malfunctioning on, on the roots why why are we making the construct malfunction I'm just trying to cover bases in case. I'm not saying do it. I'm not saying we'll need it. I it's just want it. Distraction. There's a potential distraction should we need a quick escape. You guys realize I've been at the bar the whole time and no, no idea what your plan is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I just re- re- reprogrammed this thing. <laughs> just okay. let you know. So, hey, hey, Jeff. So uh, we've got some. Have you you learned anything? Sit down here. I'm gonna come and like pretend to be drunk. Put my hand our arm around you real quick to get a uh, little whisper time. Yeah, this place has like triple the amount of security that it should have. We were thinking about we got some lapels of whatever. Mm, did you know about the lapels yet, out of character, or was that you walked away right away? So maybe not. Uh, I, I noticed all the, the big men wearing lapels, yes. Okay. I figured that out and that there's more of them than there normally would be in this type of establishment. Gotcha. 
Um, we got three lapels. We would like to sneak upstairs to see about LF. And I've reprogrammed the bartender here to uh, give us a little bit of a distraction should we need it. Um, and the uh, the code word to set it off is you need to, or is, is the code word okay at yeah, talking distance? Sorry, I changed that last minute. GM. Wait, what? what? Talking distance? <laughs> <laughs> talking distance? Can I give it order whiskey sour and that what, what sets it off? Is that okay? Or do you need to? Oh, yeah, it? you're all right. <laughs> Um, order a whiskey sour, the construct will mal malfunction now enough to hopefully cause enough of a distraction in case something happens. Just keep that in mind, should you need it. Yes, remember, these are very, they're they're very rudimentary. So yeah. like, if you would need to go and be like, hello, I would like a whiskey sour. And then it'd be like, uh, smash. <laughs> you can't just be like, whiskey sour. Well, I mean, I guess that's good because the whiskey is not like something's anyone's gonna order from in this part of the world so should be good there yeah um three of us are planning to go upstairs can you keep a watch down here yeah no i'll, I'll, I'll set it off if uh the bouncers start acting weird appreciate it all right so the three of you minus uh Minus Jebediah are gonna head upstairs. Remember, you got the two goons standing up at the top of the stairs. However, you do have your lapel pins, which is gonna help you. You get up to the top of the stairs, and again, just like when you were at the door, one of them goes, where are you going? I'm gonna sort of point a lapel to him. Excuse me, I'm, uh, I'm Nedry, I'm an architect from the Citadel. And uh, I feel like there's a uh, conversation I need to have. Shouldn't you be down with the others? Well, that's wrapping up, and I wanted to talk to, to Mr. Name, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I don't remember his name. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Mr. Philly. Mr. Philly. Well, it is our understanding that Mr. Philly does not wish to be disturbed right now. He's with his family. Well, I got no cards left, so I hope someone else has some to pull out right now. <laughs> <laughs> he told us to meet him in his office with our new construct. Or about the new, to talk to him about the new constructs. He said it's very important, and that if we are not, or if he is not ready to wait for him, bring up the jukebox. <laughs> You're with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. They're still looking at Ju you like. <laughs> Come on, man. Jukebox? Yeah. Gonna play a song on the jukebox. Is the jukebox not playing yet? Should have already started playing. That's odd. Hmm. Yeah. Was there a specific song that we need to turn on? From I, I don't remember what. Was there anything about a specific song in that note, or am I? Strangely enough, when when you guys have walked in, you have not seen a well. What your players know as a jukebox, you have not seen a jukebox. <sighs> Oh, so I don't, I don't even know so, if your characters know what a jukebox is. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it, it's a word. So yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm just with no cards. <laughs> I'm I'm relying on my roleplay skill to impress Dwayne enough to let us through, <laughs> which is I just point to this <laughs> briefcase full of Case. no, the briefcase <laughs> full of armor and be like jukebox. Because <laughs> I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> Brought the get backstabbed. Just like <laughs> so these guys are look, like they look at each other, they look down at you, and they're like, "Okay, gentlemen, it's obvious that you've had too much to drink. 
Now, if you want to fix the jukebox or whatever you need to do to the jukebox, the jukebox is downstairs. So take your your suitcase full of constructs and please move along your way. Oh, it's a suitcase with new designs for constructs and we are supposed to meet with Mr. Philippe in his office. But as I have told you, Mr. Philly is with his family. He does not wish to be disturbed. Okay, can we wait somewhere upstairs for Mr. Philly? Because as we have been told, this is highly important. I feel like doing is being a nice way of telling us that we're not getting past here without It doing is to else deal or, with. Or, or, or 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 do you words. know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, He's going to go I'm, down I'm, this route again. I'm, I'm going to throw out the LSDU thing of. Uh, it is in their reactions to the new psychotropics and how the we're gonna get thrown out constructs <laughs> respond. Yeah, I don't know. You, maybe you are. Yeah, I'm we're gonna, gonna get thrown out. Okay. I don't want to. Th- I don't want to throw you guys too many bones. I want uh, <laughs> the two who have cards. Now, remember, uh, JT, you can take a rest, so you pretty much be <laughs> out for the next action and you get to redraw your cards you're, you're pretty much like taking a five minute break like ugh, this is oh, right. I, I so, was really i was really hoping this was just going to rely on a, a card roll because it so on 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 this roll uh you cannot participate but you can redraw your cards i need so can i in order to so, so roll oh can you guys hear me yeah yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, it keeps the, the my internet and the audio keeps like jumping. Um, so in order to sort of role play a rest so I can redraw, I'm sort of going to like, oh, well, you're going to hear about this later and I'm going to run back down and sit at the bar to have a drink. Yeah, you might like, you might just like go down a couple more steps cool. and be like, ah, you talk to them. They yeah. can't get it through their skulls. And then you just go down like five yeah. steps and just go, ugh. Oh. I got now. <laughs> Look what you've done. You angered my father. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the two remaining, reasoning. Ah, reasoning. That is steam, clubs. Oh. I am not going to tell you how many you need. Yeah. I was hoping to social my way through this. This specific thing is something you cannot social your way through. Then I am absolutely useless because I don't have any clubs, nor do I have any way to draw two cards. So unless we can count our cards together, like with our powers otherwise. combined, <laughs> with our combined three brain cells, we can get the one success we need. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a seven in my hand. Yeah, I have a, uh, you a, have a six. Oh, oh, okay. That's oh. the highest number I've got. It's not going to work. I, I think well, we can run away. Five, right? So you could get to eight? Yeah, that's what we were asking if it would count like that. Nope. Because neither Can't of us turn around. It. Can't do that. Um, That was for a specific clue. Yeah. Um. Now, if you want to try and talk to these guys, you're going to need firmness. Like, you need to stand by, like, you're like, no, like, this is, we're, we're here for this. And they're just... Yeah, so that would be social, yes? Yes, that would be hearts. That's hearts. what I was boom. waiting for, because boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so was that one, two, and two? two between the two of us. Okay. So you're just hammering these guys. You're like, no... This we is are what not we were told. Smart, but we are firm. Yes. You are firm. Uh, like. Leave Ren, us. Ren, you, you realize that they have finally, like. I don't know if they've given up or they're just like, you know what? Only fools would try to, like, 
keep telling us this stuff. They're like, fine, fine, fine. And then one of them stands. Uh, so I get to come back then. Yes, you can. Yeah, you are. You are back in this scene now. So they uh, one of one of them stands at the top of the stairs. The other one okay. uh, leads the three of you to a a room off to the right of the stairwell. Uh, is the first door on the right, and it opens up into an office. And the uh, the bouncer kind of lady is like, "All right, just wait in here. As soon as Mister Philly is done with his family, I will go get him and bring him to you." I will. Thank you. Thank you. And then he closes the door. All right. Uh, do we have a plan beyond Brock. this? Yeah, like real quick. <laughs> I'm just putting my hand in my hand, just like, oh god, we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, waiting here, I'm waiting here for the rest of the description to see what's happening. You might not have time to plan. Well, I was figuring worst case scenario is we get him to either cop do it and then we can, you know, quietly get him down or uh, full on suit up, just say fuck it when he shows up, beat him into telling us what he needs to tell us and getting him out. I have no real great quiet way unless he goes himself. I could air tease him. Five or Stop ten minutes has gone by. No one has come in. Uh, should I put on the suit? Ah, all right. Jebediah, as you're hanging out at the, the bar, uh, something that you didn't notice, mainly because you were focused more on, you know, how many big guys there are in this place, you notice a construct that's kind of standing on a very small makeshift stage uh, just off of the main rotunda. And all of a sudden it kind of like springs to life and music starts coming out of it and it moves kind of like almost as if it's dancing very flow and in like a feminine manner and you hear this like almost opera-esque music no words or just like melodies going up and down similar similar to the music that you guys had heard when you were walking in Construct that plays music. That's certainly something that you don't see every day. Is this is this a? Uh, I've never seen one of these before. Turning to the couple, um, you know what this is called? Oh, that's what Mister Philly calls the jukebox. Ah, the jukebox. Okay. I, I, I was apparently giving it the French pronunciation. Doesn't it put out the most, like, beautiful metal that he makes you feel sad at the same time? It's... Oh, I love it. Oh, it, it is quite the display. It's, uh, it's, it's almost seen... opera-esque in its, in its tones as it goes like, uh, like, it's like very, very high notes and then comes back down. And, and I wonder how... Uh, I would love to uh, find out more about how we can make this construct make this wonderful noise. Uh, oh, I, the the man here is like, I. Oh, yeah. That's that's something for those those builder types. We don't know how they are programmed. We just appreciate what they do. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if, if I can. Uh, get a chance to meet with the owner of the establishment we could uh, might be able to figure out a way to get a secret or two out of him and like as soon as you say as soon as I see him like they both kind of like look around they're like you know what we we have not seen Mr. Flea this evening that's rather odd hmm well hopefully he does stop by Um, yeah, for for those upstairs, you're still sitting in this office, like, mm, 
When's this guy coming? When from the from down the hall you hear like like the pitter patter of like someone running like do, 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 do. and then you just hear someone uh talking he says go to the front door watch the front door and then you hear someone like running down the stairs do, 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 do. Jebediah you see a man very well dressed coming down the stairs in a very big hurry and uh he runs directly to the room where the men were having their conversation that little dining room uh, and as you can't see it from this angle from the bar uh, it's right about this time the the jukebox powers down stops for a minute and because the music is no longer playing all you hear like like almost clear as day is just like you band of charlatans you are filthy liars swindlers scum of the earth but what do i expect from a group of killers constructs you gave me they malfunctioned when i gave them the lsd they started to remember but it was not them. You lied. They are not my family. My wife. My son. These are strangers. And you. You can't see who he points to. You profit off the tormented souls of the deceased. You can see people getting up from the bar like their drinks like, huh? They're all like starting to walk around the corner like what the hell is going on? You can see people like getting up from their tables and walking out of the dinner rooms, like making their way towards the entrance. Like, eh. oh, I'm sipping on the tea. No, <laughs> oh. yeah. the last, thing, the last thing you, what was it? Oh no, finish before I go. Can I ahead. get a? Can I? <coughs> excuse me. Can I get in a position to view to see or? Can I tell who's yelling? Is it somebody that was in the room or is it the guy that ran down? It is the guy that ran down the stairs. Yeah, so they like kind of so, meander away from the bar just as you can like look down the hallway. You see him just standing at the, the door to that little dining room and he's just like screaming and pointing at people. Um, but from his, his yelling, it, is it clear that he was supplied that he supplied he said that if you gave him lsd did he indicate that he got the lsd from them or did i hear that wrong he just said when i gave them lsd they started to remember but it was not them these are not my family my wife my son they are strangers I didn't recognize anybody that was in the room, did I? You did not. All right. And he continues on talking about how they, they profit, profit off of the tormented souls. And he points to another man, <clears throat> the man who had his back to you. Uh, if Icarus had shared this information, I don't re remember if he did. Uh, that was the... Uh, the engineer that you guys had spoken with before you had left the Citadel. It says, you, you are the worst. He points back, he like turns back around and points down the hall. Like for a second, he th you, it looks like he's pointing at Jebediah. Like you're like, huh? <laughs> but he's actually pointing at the other construct that's up on stage. He says, you make that poor curse and then you call it a jukebox while laughing? You watch men and women get slaughtered like pigs and wonder why they've gone mad, but not anymore. And then that's where we're going to end it. Aha. Oh. Hello, yes. Cliff. Yes. How you doing? I'm just going <laughs> to hang over here. I'm just going <laughs> to grab on and hang over here for a minute or two, okay? With shit about to go down. <laughs> Shit's going down. Mountain Denver. Oh man. We kinda move. I kinda I kinda wanted to finish that off. But <laughs> we took our sweet time planning that out and I No, that's good that's good. No, it's it 
things are still going to happen the way that you that you would plan them out. They, they may not turn out the way that you had hoped, but they're <laughs> still going to play out because you paid for the successes. <laughs> ah, oh well, the deepest horrors and the bittersweet melancholy and the whole spectrum of emotions that we had just felt this evening have uh, put us into overload. So we we're going to call it here for the evening. But if you guys are looking for more terrifying tales such as this, uh, make sure that you guys check out Unknown Armies on our Twitch channel early Sundays. Vampire Masquerade, Starlight, and Smoke late Sundays. Make sure you guys also check out Alien Acid and Ice on Thursdays. Uh, do Chronicles of Darkness Season 2 early Fridays. And then Ravenloft. Friday evenings, and over on the Free League Twitch page, Simba Room, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturdays. And then, of course, next week will be our final dive into Necrobiotic, the final session next week. However, if it, awesome adventures are more your bag, make sure you guys check out Dune Adventures in the Imperium on Mondays, Fallout 2D20 on Wednesdays, and of course, over on the Onyx Path channel, make sure you guys check us out playing Exalted Essence on Tuesdays. Please check out our calendar for all of our other terrifying tales and awesome adventures. And again, before I go through all of our normal spiel, I would again like to thank uh, Penny for a Tale for allowing us to play this Kickstarter. And again, they have already been funded of their $10,000 initial goal. They are at 35,872, so they have increased since we began the show. The current stretch goal that they are working towards is, uh, where's it at? Another story. Actually, the one written by Sarah Davis just got met. That was one stretch goal at 35,000. So the next one is gonna be Bridget Jeffries doing another adventure called Paired. However, the sixth stretch goal is one that I am looking very forward to, 45,000, written by a very good friend of Warple Tales, Noir Enigma. Very good writer, in my opinion. I'm sure it will be very awesome, so make sure you guys check out the Kickstarter and help them get to that goal. Uh, the further goals further on are more stories, some written by our very other good friends, Gehenna Gaming. So make sure you guys check out the Kickstarter page and, uh, you know, Help friends out. Help make good games. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. Everyone, yeah. go to the go to the Kickstarter. We will wait right here <laughs> while you guys go over. And you know what? Yeah, with the pandemic, we know everybody doesn't have a whole lot of money. But you know what? You can still donate a dollar. Every dollar helps. You might be able to donate like half a dollar. I don't know. Yeah. You can pledge without a reward to be like, Here's a dollar. Do cool stuff. But yes, make sure you guys check out the Kickstarter page and all the cool stuff that comes with the extended stretch goals that will be going on. Again, 12 days left to support it. It is awesome. I enjoy it. But for Vorpal Tales, make sure you guys check out our website, vorpaltales.com, to see all of our stuff, social media links, rep, recaps, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. Players, please let the audience know the next time they can catch you and the cool things that you're going to be doing outside of this show. Hello and goodbye all. My name is Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And the next time you will see me will be on Monday for Dune. Hello, I am Zachary Nowder. He, him. I can be found on the Twitters at Zach Rules. Uh, written some community content you can find it on my pinned tweet it's, it's there um next time that you will see me if you are not here watching the xs um kickstarter game i'm gonna be on vancouver by night playing D. &D. i don't know what i'm doing still and it's been like four sessions no clue what i'm doing so yet oh hey folks um i'm jt um, and you can, I played Ren tonight and you can find me next tomorrow playing Unknown Armies. My big thing right now is 
I'm, uh, I'm working on my own uh, RPG set in a uh, solar punk uh, society and um, I'm interested in co-collaborators. That sounds like something interesting to you. Uh, please visit uh, Rival Theory. Uh, no, actually the best way to do that. Uh, can someone drop my email in the, uh, in the chat? I'll put it in Discord. Yeah, put it in Discord. I'll so if you're it. interested in uh, co-collaborating on a RPG, and, uh, feel free to reach out. I'll drop uh, John, JT at John Thomas. I've been Icarus. I'm also Kisama. While I cannot be found, you can watch me tomorrow during Unknown Armies. And you can also find me on Mondays in Dune. I don't believe you. You can be found, but it's always behind a Denny's. Mm. I, I've burned down several Denny's. He's, it, it's not a safe place. He, he has to find new hiding. Every <laughs> Denny's you burn, it just makes my rage <laughs> muster. I was going to say, every, rage. every Denny's is just another place for him to stay that night. Yeah. It, it doesn't destroy the power that it gives him. It just moves it to another Denny's. Therefore, that Denny's becomes stronger. <laughs> and eventually, there will be only one, and it will be the most powerful of Denny's. Yeah, but All it's of the Denny's are like a combined phylactery. You cannot destroy me. That Fortunately, is... it's going to be the, the Denny's in Chickpea, Massachusetts off a of turnpike. It's not the best Denny's. <laughs> it will be when it's the only Denny's. The powers combined. Is that wait? Is that how the the things in Harry Potter work? Voldemort's things work? No, no, no. They get no. more powerful, more no, powerful with each. Do you other remember history? there was this one movie a long time ago where it was uh, uh, not Jet Li, but somebody who was multiverse, and one of them kept on killing all different versions of himself. Yeah, that so was the one. The oh, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. And the one Jet Li was just, or if it was Jet Li, I don't yeah, was it? Okay, just became super powerful after being a normal dude. Yeah, that's that Denny's. It's just super good. So like the Highlander. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There can except be you only have to, one Denny's. Except you have to burn them down. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> With all of that ridiculousness out of the way, uh, we, are, we do not do votes uh, in this game. Because I, honestly, I don't know how votes would work because it's a card-based game. You get a free, a you free get an extra card. play, a free, free joke card. Yeah, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We're, we're three sessions. I never. We'll, we'll figure yeah. it out after next. That would be that would be something weird to uh, to look into. Uh, for anyone yeah. who is going to show up for our our final uh, next week, it may run a little short. Uh, and if it does, we are going to talk about and give our feedback on how we think this game runs. Uh, maybe even possibly reaching out to the uh, Penny for a Tail group and maybe getting someone to chat with us, ask some questions, get some answers. But having said all that, we are going to sign off and we bid you all adieu. But we will see you all again, everyone. Good night. Bye, have a wonderful night. Twos. 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 <laughs> Twos.